Now that you got your own longboard, it is time to motorize it. For that, I started off with a gear wheel that is slightly smaller than the wheel it needs to get attached to in order to transfer the rotational energy of the motor onto the street. But there's already a problem because the inner hole of it is too small for the trucks. It needs to get enlarged to a diameter of 20mm which can be achieved by marking the rough outline of the circle and then using a small drill to create dozens of holes. In my case though, I used a metal lathe which I didn't record. Sorry. But once this step was done, the gear wheel should fit easily. Next, we divided the surface of it into 6 equal parts, secured it in place with a small bench vise, made markings 3.5mm from the inner circle on the 6 lines and then used a prick punch to create indentations where those markings used to be. With the help of the 3.5mm drill, we used those indentations as a guide to create 6 holes, which didn't work out that well because the drill had broken off in one of them. So we are only going to use 4 of them, but definitely use more if you can. Afterwards, we positioned the wheel with the gear onto the trucks and fine-tuned the location of the gear so that it does not wobble around. Once it looked decent, we secured it with tape and used a 3mm drill to firstly create markings with the gear as a template and then drill through the wheel completely. For the next steps, we need M3 threaded rods, which gets cut to 4 pieces with a length of around 7cm through the help of a saw. Those then get pushed snugly into the four holes of the wheel and secured with self-locking nuts in the front and a combination of washer, nut, nut, washer, gear wheel, washer and finally a nut on the other side. Later I realized though that due to vibrations the nuts like to loosen up but luckily just a bit of Loctite can solve this problem. It's also a good idea to check in between whether the gear runs smoothly and once I was happy with the results, we used a saw to cut off the axis of the threaded rod. Now that this obstacle was out of the way, I continued by placing all the core electronic components onto the board and did some basic measuring to get a clearer image on how this all should play out. The most complicated hurdle though was the adapter which connects to the trucks and holds the motor in mid-air but still in a fixed position so that the tooth belt stays tense. So obviously I started with that by creating a couple of crude technical drawings which I used to construct a cardboard prototype that worked surprisingly well even during the first try. I then created an optimized vector graphic with Inkscape that features elongated mounting holes for the motor in order to adjust the tension of the belt. Afterwards, I exported this graphic as an SVG file and imported it into Easel, which is the control software for my Xcarve CNC machine. The material I used was 100 by 160 10mm thick aluminum that I secured in place with the clamps of the X-Carve and started the milling process with the basic outline of the object. Once again, drilling a dozen holes is the poor man's version of this step, which is actually faster, because each lap of the bit took 2 minutes and 14 seconds. Multiply that with the necessary 100 laps and you know how long it took. But nevertheless, I then started the milling process for the inner cutouts, which had a slight offset in the y-axis, but thankfully it didn't matter that much. Once the 10 hour torture was over, I freed the adapter from its prison, rasped down the sharp edges and assembled the gear system, which made a good first impression. Only thing left to do to complete it was to mark the location of the yet missing M5 bolt and drilling a hole through the trucks, which sounds easy but at some point we hit very hard metal. A 5mm HSS cobalt drill was necessary to get all the way through. Then we simply marked how the bolt would need to go through the adapter to hold the motor in mid-air and also drilled the necessary holes. After rasping down a bit of the trucks, 
I secured the adapter with the bolt, washer, spring washer and two nuts. And don't you dare to forget the Loctite. By cutting off the access bolt and reinstalling the rest of the gear system, the hardest part was finally complete. So I continued this adventure with the two main aluminum cases for the electronics. The given measurements ensure that the batteries can sit inside without a problem while not being too large to hit objects which lay on the street. So I began by using the board truck nuts to mark one spot in each corner of the two boxes which I used to drill the 8 5mm holes. After positioning them in the center of the boards with a distance of 1.5cm to each other, I used them as a template to extend the 5mm holes through the longboard and secured everything with M5 bolts and nuts. Each battery will later sit in one compartment, the ESC or electric speed controller will be positioned in the case next to the motor and additionally we are going to need two screwed cable glands two 7 pins balancer extensions, two XT60 connectors and two 3 position switches. I started the mounting process by marking a center point for a 60mm circle 3cm from the edge of the case. Then I drilled a couple of smaller holes and used a file to make it look somehow like a circle. Does need to be perfect though, but the cable gland should fit nicely. The opposite side of this case receives a slightly bigger circle with a diameter of 20mm at the same spot. And then I moved on to the front. There I started with a XT60 connector 2.5cm from the edge, followed by a 7 pins balancer connector with a distance of 1cm from the XT60 and finally the switch with an additional distance of 4cm. By drilling a couple of 6mm holes or even smaller ones for the balancer and using a file to create the necessary shapes, all the cutouts for the first case were complete. The second box is pretty much the same, only exception would be the 20mm hole which isn't necessary anymore. Afterwards I used 3 core 1.5 square mm flexible wire to extend the short wires of the brushless motor. And don't forget the heat shrink tubing, which can save you from unwanted shorts and a possible destruction of the ESC. After pushing the new wire through the cable gland and shortening it, I got myself 0.5mm thick steel sheet that I needed to cut to two pieces with a length of 20cm. Then I positioned the two batteries in the middle of those pieces and marked their width onto it. With the help of the top section of the metal case or even a ruler, I bended the sheets upwards in a way that the batteries would fit inside a bit loose. Then I marked the heights onto the sheets and bended them again with a bit more complex clamping technique. The intermediate result should look like this and by marking a line 1.5cm from the second bends, I shortened the metal sheets once again with my tin snips and continued by marking three evenly spaced spots 0.75cm from the bend. After drilling 3mm holes through the metal sheets, I positioned them as close as possible to one side of the lid of the metal case and used the existing holes to drill through the lid and secured everything with M3 bolts and nuts. For the final step of the mechanical builds, I shortened the bolts with a saw and closed it all up to see whether it fits and it surely does. With those tasks out of the way, the next and final part of the series will be easy again. Hopefully. Until then, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign, stay creative and I will see you next time.